got to keep them closer to 10 offensive rebounds. They were at 16 in that game. That's going to be a tall task, but rebounding is going to be the game. Two stats to watch. Does Purdue turn it over, and can Northwestern lock down the defensive glass? Braden Smith against Bowie to start things off. We saw in the first meeting, every time Zach Eady touched the ball, post trap came immediately. It's the plan again tonight. Here's Braden Smith. The runner drops. Boy, he's really looked for his own offense. Last two games, 11 of 14 from the field. Went through a little bit of a lull with his own scoring. Was still really making plays for others. But right there out of the trap, looking to get into that painted area. May have been the reason they won Rutgers Rat yeah. on Sunday. Ty Berry working inside, and Eady with a rebound. Here's Braden Smith, only player in the nation averaging 12 points, five rebounds, seven assists per game, yet not on the koozie wit top 10 list for the best point guard in America. Ball loose on the floor, Edie goes down to get it, scramble for it, and a tie-up will give it to Northwestern. How can you ignore the play of those two? Here's Ryan Langborn. Three won't go, and Trey Kaufman ran with the rebound. Well, not only is Purdue going to have to contain the bounce, because that's always something with Boo Booey, but Langborg and Barry off those screens, they're going to have to contain that as well. A real grind. Two games against Illinois already. You look at their schedule on the back half of those, those last ten, and there's a real opportunity for Northwestern. Oh, Lance Jones. Lance Jones 0 for 6 from 3 at Rutgers, but you know he can make them. They've been shooting it really well outside of that game, and they're just lines it up from the top of the key and drills it. Ty Berry provides the answer for Northwestern. You can count on it. And I think that Ty Berry, when he struggles, Northwestern struggles. He's been a real X factor. And good for the Cavs to see him make one early. And don't be surprised to see him hit those three. Second in the league in three-point percentage this year. Whip that pass over to Lance Jones. He'll try again. And the rebound to Langborn. Oh, Jones almost picked his pocket. Got to be careful with Lance Jones lurking. And five steals. Win at Rutgers. Barnheiser slips. And on the way down to travel. And the heart's got to be beaten a little bit faster. Playing here. There's that trap again. And it forces the turnover. Good trap. Boom. Pushing end to end. Brady Smith picked it away. Bowie in some trouble. Needs to get it out of there. And a turnover. Smith, Nicholson chasing him out. That leaves Edie alone against Barnhouse. Bowie quiet so far. It's not an easy place to be, and you see Edie paint it off with a jam. How do you defend that if you're Northwestern? Well, you're, you're just, you're stuck. Ball pressure has got to limit that pass, and that's how you take that away. But it's strong on the three from Barnheiser. Smith looking to push ahead to Jones to the rim for two. Time constraints. We now move ahead in the action. Langborg curling to the elbow. Now has to back that one out. Northwestern within eight. Late first half. Hunger attacking against Edie. And he's fouled by the big man. Made a big three, but he's had 10 against Illinois, 10 against Michigan State. If you miss back-to-back -back free throws, free chicken. Tapping twice. And it will not happen. Luke Hunger, aptly named, <laughs> trying to keep an entire crowd from free chicken. It's just amazing to me, in, in all the venues that have this, and it's it's growing by the day, it feels like. It's some of the loudest cheers you hear oh, are for night. the free chicken. So high floater tipped around into the hands of Gillis. Working in the paint, Gillis. Has to back that one out, don't reset. 12 to shoot. I think Mason Gillis's understanding of role definition is as good as anybody in the conference. Trickle to Gillis in the corner for three. Edie with the swat. Smith, all of them. Short. And Edie trying to swat it again, but Ty Berry cradles. It's a dangerous game for the Cats. They've got to be better on the glass. Bowie starting to feel it. He's hit another three. And 
And here come the Cats scratching back to within four. Boy, and what a response. And just like that, we're talking about how, boy, what, what a, a tough half for Bowie. And you look at the score sheet, he's got 13. He's five of eight, and now three of four from three. This is a show by Preston to back Smith up. The lob inside. Karam's off the hands of Heidi. Shot clock at 10. Smith with a shot fake. And Lawyer with the finish. Nice decision there by Brayden Smith. And you got a defender helping uphill, and he wisely just dumps that off to Fletcher Lawyer. State Farm halftime report coming up. Dave Revson, Rayfield Davis, and Bruce Weber. That's your cue. Get set. We're almost ready to come to you for the State Farm halftime report. And it looks like Purdue is kind of doing that zone up thing again. And they're trying to take away Bowie and his ability to drive. The runner short. Got a good look, though. Just a bit short on that one. Six point game for Purdue. Oh, what a pass. Smith whips it into the corner. Open three for Mason Gillis. It's just so high level. The, the fact that he can whip that thing across his body. Mason Gillis shooting over 50% from three on the year. Big response again. Northwestern responded. Purdue responds. Do the Cats have one more play in them before halftime? Barry fakes the three, gathers, and hits a giant three for Northwestern. What a great use of the shot fake right there. Heidi goes flying by, still tries to contest, but Ty Barry, another one from deep. Three seconds. Smith lost it, and a foul. He's going to shoot free throws with 1.8, a 79% foul shoot. They didn't do that the first game back in December. They're going to have to score, and they, they for the most part, they, they've done that here in the first. Eight points and nine assists for Smith, and a block for Heidi sends us to halftime. seven turnovers it wasn't a huge issue for Northwestern but they came at some difficult times for the Wildcats. Well, and just for that they're a team that doesn't turn the basketball over. Langborg did a nice job of keeping that toe down. You look at their numbers on the year I mean they're fourth nationally in turnovers per game. Yeah only nine per game so they're closing in on their game number very quickly. Here's Barnizer they'd love to get him going in the second half that's a good start. And I like that they went right to him because he had a tough first half a physical play got to the body of Trey Kaufman Wren and then he's got an assortment of ways that he can score around the basket. They need him to get into the scoring column just four points for Barnizer who's averaged 18 points per game over the last seven. Trey Kaufman Wren left alone for three in the rebound. Langborg, just seven of 17 for Trey this year. He can make them, but hasn't taken all that many in the last six or seven games. There's Bowie probing, looks up. There's Zach Eady. He says, I'd like to go somewhere else. I think he thought he was going to have Eady out there for the switch, but Lawyer wisely passed Eady off and took the ball himself. There's Bowie against Lawyer, ball tipped away, still loose. Bowie diving for it, able to save it, jumping into the front court. They've got to get a shot up. It's Barry from deep, and he oh, hits! Wow. A scramble three, outstanding, but Bowie is still down. See Bowie here, he, oh, he kind of gets landed on. Looked like the backside of Lance Jones collided with the head of Boo Bowie. And I thought Langborg got both of those feet down into the front court before he actually touched the basketball. Smith flips it out to Jones, back to Edie. There's that post trap, in some trouble. Edie going to work against Nicholson. Shot block, but a foul. Foul number two on Barnheiser. Edie, good on the first. Boo Booey, they're working on that neck, so it's a pinch in the neck, perhaps, when he got bumped by Jones. Nothing malicious or intentional about it, just a collision, scrambling for the ball. Edie one for two, Nicholson plucks the board. Four-point game, early second half. This has been a fun one to start our doubleheader night on the Big Ten Network. Almost a Northwestern turtle. Barnheiser against Trey Kaufman Red. Step back. That three glancing off. Rebound out of bounds. It'll go to Purdue. On the Northwestern bench. Lawyer. It's 
inside the paint, dumps it to Edie. There's the trap, feeds Trey Kaufman Ren, blocked out of bounds. Eight to shoot. Edie, deep in the post. Nicholson strips it away. Kaufman Ren finds it, gets his own miss, and puts it in. He'll go to the line for a chance at one more. He impacts games, getting on the offensive glass. Point play cannot go. The rebound tipped into the hands of Nick Martinelli. Bowie at the scorer's table, waiting to come back in. Still grimacing a little bit, twisted his neck around. The post feed to Nick Martinelli and a good finish. It's an elite pass and a great catch. And the way that Martinelli just kept his defender sealed up the lane. That was well done. Seems like a simple play, but those simple fundamentals get you buckets. Nick Martinelli got bigger in the offseason, and he's been able to use that extra size and weight to his advantage at times this year. Quick call the rim, just surrounded by purple. And short. And it, it's pretty amazing when you look at the, the minutes numbers for these Northwestern guards. And Bowie is third in the Big Ten, Barnheiser second, Langborg in the top ten at ninth. These guards are logging a ton of minutes, and you said it, if they're going to win, this is going to be the guy that brings them home. Yeah, it's not a surprise, Bowie. Seeing Barnheiser at 36 minutes a game is a bit of a surprise. Good work inside by Hunger. He got right to the chest of Zach Eady. There's that two-man action. The, the whole backside's cleared out, and Hunger with some real physicality going right through Zach Eady. Rob, that's the second time tonight we've seen Luke yes. Hunger do that. No, he's, he's been really aggressive. I, I think you know, Chris Collins talked about it post-Ohio State, the chip on his shoulder that he's kind of played on recently. Oh. He's starting to be asserted. Five now for the sophomore from Indiana. You think back to that Illinois game where he just torched the fighting Illini. This is the most aggressive that he's been looking for his own offense since then. 23 in that one. He was ridiculously good in that game. Here's Hunger. He'll try from deep. Luke Hunger can't get it to go. Northwestern still not able to get an offensive rebound in this game. Braden Smith probing. And draws the contact and the foul to now looking to make plays for others while also being a guy that you still know can give you 20. He's just a great player in this league, and you think about his legacy when it's all said and done. If they make the NCAA tournament this year, which I think they will, it, the numbers speak for themselves, but going to two NCAA tournaments and, and all of his accolades, he's one of the best players to ever play at Northwestern. Perry on the bench after picking up that third foul before the timeout. Here's Martinelli throwing it towards the rim. Langborg scoops it up and a second chance. That's an offensive rebound for Northwestern. They've had one. Bowie looking for second chance points. How about three of them? And Bowie brings the Cats within two. Well, you got that drop coverage, and that means that Bowie, if you can pick off this, the, the defender, and that's exactly what, what Luke Hunger did there, Bill Bowie is just walking into a three because Edie's going to be back. Not a bad guy to walk into a three yeah, with. That's, that's who you want with the ball in their hands. Smith, after missing a couple of free throws, rare misses. And the ball tipped out of bounds. Hill inbound. Comes to Smith. Smith probing. Has to hoist a shot, and he's fouled. Bowie with the personal. Now, Purdue, among major conference teams, makes more free throws than anybody in college basketball. But Braden Smith, well, he's frustrated even right his now. first make, he didn't look like he was comfortable shooting it. You could see. Kind of his reaction to the way that he snuck it in, and then that last one back iron. How about that difference? So 13 of 22, Northwestern has attempted two free throws tonight. 20 attempt difference in this game as Barnheiser steps back the air ball out of bounds to Purdue. You can get that shot at any time. Well, part of the reason why you have a 20 free throw difference in this game. You're not forcing that call. And we've got a whistle on a foul underneath. No fouls whistled against Purdue in the second half. Into Edie, working against Preston inside. The defense there, and Barnheiser really did the job from behind. Bowie, 
to work inside. Drops it off for Martinelli. I don't know how he got it to Martinelli. Boy, the balance there. Boo Boo, it's just big time point guard play. I mean, behind the back, he's off balance, but then he finds it, dishes it off, and Northwestern has hung in. They're just a really good team. I am so impressed with what Chris Collins has done with this group this season. This is a tough team to play in a tougher building. And it's a one point game in the second half. Here's Edie to work inside. And the hook through contact with Blake Preston and jumps. And easily could have been a foul right there on Blake Preston. Kind of chucked him as he was going into that jump hook. I think those middle post ups are Purdue's friend, and they, they do that quite often. Haven't seen a lot tonight. That's what I think Edie's going to look for. I think it'd be wise for Purdue to do the same. Only nine points for Zach Edie early in this second half. Preston trying to turn the corner on Edie. Patient in the paint. Gets rid of it to Bowie, tried to wrap it around, and it's tipped out with six to shoot. Very effective for Purdue. Inbound to Langborg. Baseline jumper drops. Northwestern within one. Just a simple pin down. And you've got Ryan Langborg getting to his spot, raising up. Wildcats are shooting 61% from the floor in this game. And a steal by Barnheiser to the other end, looking for the lead, and he flips it over the rim. <laughs> he wanted to hammer that thing, but <laughs> a little flat tire. A play, though. Brooks Barnheiser in the passing lanes. He really struggled in that first half. He's right at the ship in the second. Gillis, the open man. What a for three. That's an incredible pass because it's back against the grain. You've got Braden Smith almost to that left block, and he's hitting Gillis on the right wing. Three guards, Ty Berry, Ryan Langborg, and Boo Booey hurt Purdue so badly. 72 points between those three in the December game. Those three are living up to the billing once again here tonight. Second half, they're really starting to flex their muscle. Here's Gillis, open again for three. Great look, Edie with a rebound, a little trouble with it, but a foul. Which they can do. Just the third made free throw in the last nine attempts for Purdue, yeah, they, but they are left, dominating at the line. They, they've left some points out there. Just 61% from the line. And two for Edie, puts him into double figures, his 73rd straight game in double figures. Two point lead for Purdue. Bowie against Morton. And a foul. The first Purdue foul of the second half goes on Braden Smith. The figures. That, that is the rarest of air that you're going to see in terms of Purdue basketball. I mean, you're talking about two incredible scores. And two number one picks. Bowie. There's Martinelli. Ten to shoot. To his left, and there it is. The short, but the tip won't go either from Preston. He got a good look at the foul. Both those guys. You'll, you'll take any Nick Martinelli left-hand post up and Preston with an opportunity on the offensive glass. Just the second offensive rebound of the day for Northwestern. It slides down. That's a slick spot over there. Barnheiser slipped there in the first yeah. half. They got numbers. This is going to be an open one. And Bowie will hit it. An open three gives Northwestern the lead. Yeah, now Brayden Smith coming up a little bit hobbled, but Northwestern taking advantage. He went down and five on four opportunity. Like he was rubbing his left hip a little bit as he came up the floor. He slipped over there on that right side of the lane. The entry to the left side and Edie back to Gillis. Reposting his Edie. No post trap. One on one. And that shot pinballs out to Northwestern. Boy, that, that's what you will take every time down the floor if you're Purdue. A, a right hand jump hook for Edie. Finally one on one coverage. Pretty amazing to see. He's only taken five shots tonight. Is that the first time we've seen yes. Northwestern not post trap him? Every single time he's faced two. Langborg will drop it off underneath to Preston. Preston trying to get Edie going and a whistle. What a battle tonight. This really has a high level basketball game. Barnheiser trying for the steal. Instead, he got caught. That's a very underrated aspect of his game. Front end, pinballs out to Barnheiser and a foul 
and just hung right in there and stayed right with it. Martinelli looking on the bounce finds Barry. Ten to shoot for Martinelli. Working inside. Bowie's going to have to go. Martinelli trying to set the screen. Bowie into the paint. Floater over Edie. Rims out to Coffin Wren. He got a good look. Nice little slip there from Martinelli. Open the door for Bowie to get in the lane. Now Jones looking to attack. I like it by Lance Jones to, to not take that four shot instead and trying to make something happen at the rim. Even if it doesn't work out, didn't force that three. Like the defense from Barnheiser. Good recovery. Barry stops. Was. Just intent on shooting that yeah, three. And Chris Collins is frustrated. Chris Collins, his reaction, he, he did not like the shot. Jones will turn the corner. Floats it over everyone. Edie there to clean it up. And he just wears you out. You know, every time having to block out, it's one of those things where you do that over a full 40 minutes, it's exhausting. It's like pushing a boulder up a hill. Yes. Not that I've done that. We do that often in Omaha. Very right. big thing we do. Boulders up hills. Bowie for three. Rolls all the way out of the rebound into the hands of Trey Kaufman Red. Lance Jones fortunate because once again, Purdue going removed on the screen. Purdue by one. We've got a whistle of a foul. Front end of the one and one for Trey Kaufman Red. Oh. Won't go. And we've got a whistle on the foul going against Purdue. Look at that disparity. And a foul. Trying to get around that screen at the... That's the possession here for the cast. They're going into Martinelli and going to try to play through him. There's Bowie against Jones. Shot clock down to 10 around the Nicholson screen. Bowie bump, dumps it to Nicholson for the two-hand flush. That is so good by Boo Bowie. He's keeping Lance Jones on his back, never lets him get back into the play. Lance Jones never squares the basketball up. That makes Edie help uphill. And there's Nicholson, who's been so much better at the rim as of late. Jones all the way to the rim, can't get it to go. The tip by Edie won't go. Everybody jumping for that basketball, and it ends up in the hands of Bowie. Boy, and, and Northwestern, for the most part, has survived on the glass tonight. Purdue has gotten some offensive rebounds, but it hasn't gotten out of hand. Just 10. Well, you watch Boo Bowie play, and it just shows there is still a spot in the college game for a guy to develop his game Absolutely. over the course of a career. And he stayed in one place, and he's now won the last two years, and he's a great story. Barry with the shot clock. Winding wow. rattles it down deep in the corner for two. That's the second time tonight, Kevin, that we've seen him go to that step back. End of clock situation. He's taken some tough ones, some shots that maybe Chris Collins hasn't liked, but they are just stepping up end the clock and making a play. Back to Edie. There's the trap from Martinelli. Return to Jones for three. Rattles home for tied at 66. Boy, just a, a little bit late from Ty Berry. That, that trap is coming to Edie. That double team is there. And Ty Berry has got to be there on that catch out. Trying to beat Heidi to a spot into the corner. Bowie's three short. Rebound into the hands of Langborg. And the Wildcats back on top. That's just a winning play by Ryan Langborg. No block out there by Purdue. He's just hanging around. And with all the big bodies, it's one of the smaller guards on the floor that makes the play. Edie has the trap. Back to Jones. Got the open look. Same result. That's like the same exact play, but except this time it's Ryan Langborg not rotating out to Lance Jones. around that Nicholson screen and most of them it seems come from the Missouri Valley Conference <laughs> that is so true you could make an all Valley Big Ten team this year Mason Gillis to Lance Jones all Valley all defensive team as well in the Valley Edie inside against Nicholson with that left hand Boy, well done by Purdue because they gave Zach Edie so much space the, the floor was balanced to the left side that allowed Edie one-on-one -on -one coverage. Long way to run on that trap, and he takes advantage on the right block. Bowie, a little hesitation on the way in. 
two teams are so well coached. I don't know how many times we've seen excellent offensive sets out of timeout. Just Pui just splashes down a three. I mean, his clutch percentage as you get into the winning time plays of five minutes and under, just ridiculous. And you have to remember, Bowie, Langborg, and Barry scored 72 points in that first meeting. They've now got 53 here tonight. Six of nine is Bowie from three. And Lawyer trying to answer cannot. Bowie with his fifth rebound. Boo, 22 points after such a slow start. Five rebounds, four assists. Well, you knew that he was going to keep bringing it. I mean, he, he is just a guy that every night in this league, he, he is fantastic. Oh, and that's now nine straight games against top 25 Big Ten teams with 20 points or more for Boo Boo. Martinelli got to that left-hand hook, but he left it short. Different deal when you're going over the top of Edie. You could tell that he, he felt his presence there on that little hook. Here's Smith. Back it goes to Edie. Trap comes late. Edie able to pass out of it, and Gillis... Bowie and Barry combined for three are 11 of 16 tonight as Gillis gets one more free throw to go. Remember, Purdue still has fouls to give as we come down the stretch in this game. Northwestern well over the limit, so double bonus, two free throws the rest of the way for Purdue. And two for two is Mason Gillis to tie this game at 73. with 12 to shoot. It's back to Langdor. Seven to shoot. Bowie needs some help. Nicholson out to provide the screen. Bowie over eat. Oh, oh my walk goodness! Boo Bowie! Raining it down from deep. That's an incredible shot. Zach Eady at 7-4 is right there, but that the ball is in the hands of the guy that you want, and Boo Booey once again with a heck of a play. Eady left it short. The foul comes on Nicholson, and that's it for Matthew Nicholson. Let's go back to this Boo Booey shot. This is just silly at this point. It really is. I mean, this is late clock. He comes up, gets this ball screen. And Edie understands with that clock, maybe he could have been a little bit more up, but still with his length, he gets a good contest. Those count, and those are the shots that Boo Booey makes. I mean, in the previous shot, we saw the paint crew behind the basket. The look of anguish and frustration from the crowd. And you don't blame him. No, I mean, I mean, they've seen this before. You know, Bowie, 31 in the game in December, had 26 in the win last year. And he's got 25 tonight. He has just been a Purdue killer over the last three. But now the battle of attrition begins. Nicholson's fouled out. So now Northwestern down to two bigs, Hunger and Preston. I mean, Nicholson played that perfectly. I mean, he sat down while Edie was, was shooting that. And, Honestly, the, the crowd, <laughs> he did it on purpose. Look at it, too. And Edie 0 for 2. You saw the free throw attempt disparity. It's significant. 30 attempts for Purdue tonight to 2 for Northwestern. But they've only been able to take advantage to 16 points and only 7 that's better a, in the that's second half. crazy stat right there. Edie's 5 of 10. Bowie hesitates. A lot of traffic. Oh, oh, it around. How did he even see Brooks Barnheiser down there? And you know what? With him making that last shot, now Edie is feeling that. It's the in and out. He beats Edie off the bounce. And then what a cut by Barnheiser there on the backside. I'm telling you, Robbie, we are seeing some high-level point guard play. No, he's just a maestro. And that's in the back of the mind. There's the in and out. Barnheiser with a great cut, but the pass is just tremendous. It's really so impressive, too. I mean, you, every Northwestern player is ready to receive a no, pass from Boo Boo. And Bowie is so good at playing off two feet, whether that's getting to his floater or making a play for somebody else. Five-point game for Northwestern. Looking to sweep the Boilermakers. Jones for three. What a shot. What a pass. 
pass there. Braden Smith feeling that once again. They're taking away the roll, so it's Lance Jones on the weak side. are not there. Give us the rebound. Two-point game. How about Purdue switching up their coverage and hedging there with Braden Smith to keep Lance Jones on Boo Booey. There's Booey against Smith. Edie out. Smith will turn all the way. Oh. Seconds to go in a tie game. This is where you need to get on your social media account and say, get to Big Ten Network now. Barnheiser going to work. Barry inside. Short. Eating. And as Purdue looks for the lead. That just can't be the play that, that Chris Collins drew up in that huddle. When you've got Bowie. Here's Smith. A slide under a minute to play, dare I say, in regulation. Smith working against Barry. Bouncing to Edie. Hunger all over and count the bucket. And the foul. Purdue leads. We talked about Boo Booey and how composed he is on two feet, but Brayden Smith is equally as good. Never panics, could have let this fly, but instead he, he makes the right decision, bounces that into Edie, and what a decision. Brayden Smith now with 12 assists. I, I believe that's that a, career a career high. high. It is. His career high previous was 11 twice, fifth time in double figures, but a career high 12 assists for Braden Smith. And what a time for it. That was just a great decision by the sophomore point guard. And Edie now 5 of 12 at the line. On the year, 74%. This has got to be zero time. It's got to be Boo Booey, who's got the ball in his hands to make this play. He's matched up against one of the all-defensive team members in the Valley last year in Lance Jones. Here's Barry for three. He is fouled. Ty Berry is fouled, and he's getting three free throws. Chris Collins went to the old John Diebler play where you get that drive to the baseline, and then they're just pinning right back for Berry. You can see Morton encountering that screen. Well done by Hunger. And the contact there, that's a major development, and a great call by Chris Collins coming out of that free throw. Braden Smith with the foul. Barry, good on the first. He's an 89% foul shooter. Twenty tonight for Barry. In his career, this is the 41st game he scored in double figures. Northwestern is 31 and nine in the previous four. I mean, he's been such an X factor for them. We talked about that in the first half. When, when he has played well, Northwestern has won. And it's all three to give the Cats the one-point lead. We're looking at about a seven, maybe seven and a half second difference between game and shot clock. Timeout is used by Purdue. Remember, fouls to give for Purdue. So if this is a miss and a Northwestern rebound, Purdue's got a foul to get to that situation where they get him to the line. First things first. Smith. Wanted it, he didn't get it to him. Lawyer with 11 on the shot clock. Lawyer will drive inside, flips it to the rim. That won't go. Edie is there for the rebound, and Edie is fouled. And Edie's going to the line. Well, Blake Preston did a nice job there of being in a, in a three quarter and not allowing that post entry feed, but. Fletcher Lawyer putting pressure on the defense, and that's the power of having the best offensive rebounder in the Big Ten. Any shot up there can be good offense for Purdue. Second foul on Bowie. And there's Edie. Clutch free throw number one. One more for the lead. Northwestern with a timeout. Purdue with a timeout. Possession arrow favors the Boilermakers. We 
the top. Northwestern can work for the final shot of regulation. You know where this is going. This is Boo Booey's time. Booey fouled by Jones. Foul to give. Barry will inbound. Booey into the backcourt. Off he goes with three seconds. With two seconds, the floater short. Edie rebounds it. He wanted a timeout. We've hit zeros on the clock. Did he get the timeout before overtime arrived? When regulation's not enough, part two. They feel good about where they're at right now. And Purdue will start with a basketball. Wants it to get to Edie. One on one against Preston. Edie forcing it up and gets the roll. And that's the risk you, pay, you, you run if you're Northwestern and you're going to go single coverage. Edie's going to get to his left shoulder and that's his bread and butter. the bounce. Langdorf will dump it down and it rattles around off Preston's fingertips but, and through. But the separation there that Langdorf gets with Fletcher Lawyers would put so much pressure on the big. Great pass from Langdorf. Well, got Preston there to finish the job. Significant foul trouble for Northwestern. Remember Nicholson fouled out before the end of regulation. A minute gone in overtime. Smith to Eden oh! for two. Plus one. Purdue puts you in such binds, especially in pick and roll, because you look at Boo Booey, he's going to be the weak side help man. As Edie rolls, he's got to take on Edie, gets him a little bit, but he's scared about getting back out to Lance Jones, and that allows that pass into Edie. Preston's late, and what a find once again from Braden Smith. And now Edie at the line, continues his struggles. Barry rips down the rebound, six for 15 tonight for Zach Eady at the strike. Jones with the screen, Bowie. Jones back to cover. Drops it off, Hunger. Needs some help, finds it from Barnheiser. Barnheiser pivots, foul. That's why you drive the basketball right here. A little bit of a helter-skelter possession. Barnheiser jump stopping. We'll see how much contact is there. I think as he's going into that shooting motion, that, that is the right call down there. And Barnheiser, a 75% shooter. This, this, is this the will first. be the most fired up oh. Nuggets of the year right here, I think. Free chicken if he misses this second straight shot. Free chicken. Chickens rejoice across America as Braden Smith will walk it up. Three point game in overtime. Here's the lawyer, shot clock under 10. Back it goes to yeah, Eddie. Hunter just foul. like grabbing there. Yeah. He just kind of gave up possession, panicked, and yanked on Eddie. Hunger's fouled out on this foul. Fans here at Mackey right now. Unbelievable. This, he's gonna, they're going to sit down, and they didn't do it. <laughs> that, that was high level from Mackey Arena right there. The paint crew is pointing at Hunger. He tried to cue it like Nicholson did, and they all stopped their count. Yeah, lesson learned. And two for two. Two big free throws in a three-point game now. Looking for the top. He's got it! Barry went down and has hurt his right leg. He wanted an and one. Chris Collins can't believe it, that there wasn't an and one. 
Did Barry kick his leg, or was there interference with his ability to land after the shot? Well, it's those pin downs again, and that's what Northwestern has done for Barry over the last eight or nine games. Hopefully he's okay to keep going. What, what a game this is. Barry's flying off the pin down. Ethan Morton's behind the play. And he does, he kicks that out and gets contact with the leg of Morton, and that's why he ends up spraining that ankle. See if they go out, and Barry goes down. Inside to Ethan. A laser pass for Brandon Smith. Langboard for three. And Smith the rebound. Quick shot for Northwestern. This ball needs to go inside. There goes Edie on the roll. Smith oh, right. 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 It's amazing, isn't it? Yes. His 630-point game. And he's left so many at the line. I, I just truly hope that Purdue fans understand how great this dude is. Bowie. Backs it out to Barry. Huge possession for Northwestern. Barry, Barry, for this is it. He just put a ton of English on that and lost control. Man, they got exactly what oh, they wanted. Wow. And a jarring screen by Edie. It's loud in here, but if you're Blake Preston, the one thing you've got to do is let Ty Barry know that that screen is right there waiting on him. Smith inside against Preston. Six point Purdue lead. No timeouts for the Cats. Barnheiser against Gillis. Edie lurking. Counts the bucket and the foul. What a response for Brooks Barnheiser. Northwestern had to have it. Brooks Barnheiser kind of dribbling in. Here's the screen on Barry. That, that is a brick wall. And Preston, you see how far back he is. Barnheiser going to work. Boy, that, I don't know about that one. I thought Mason Gillis was straight up, and that's certainly a break for the Northwestern Wildcats. Barnheiser one for two tonight. Gets the roll. One possession game with 133 to go in OT. Man, I mean, this has been some kind of game. Again, unbelievable. The last three have, have been instant classics. Three seconds. Where else would you rather be? It's an offensive foul underneath Gillis. Called for the foul and a turnover to Northwestern. Boy, and Zach Eady had Nick Martinelli and, and was going to have him pinned. Mason Gillis just trying to, to overwhelm Ty Berry right there and get him for the offensive foul. And Northwestern with the chance now, down three. Bowie, probing, driving, scooping, no good. Well, the verticality there, though, by Gillis really affected that shot by Bowie at the basket. Under a minute to go in OT. Matt Painter wants his timeout. He's got one left. And it comes to Braden Smith. Shot clock at 15. Here's Gillis in the corner. Smith off the shot fake. Open lawyer for three. Inbound to Bowie. Here we go. Bowie. Finds Martinelli, roll into the rim for two, and now Northwestern quickly will pressure and then foul. And Martinelli commits the foul. Lance Jones, 74% at the line, will head to the line for a pair. Fourth foul on Martinelli. Five of seven tonight is Jones at the line. Jones. He was the National Guard of the Week for Fox this week and made some big, big plays in that Rutgers game over the weekend. 
He's made some huge plays tonight. And a little stumble out of the shoe. They're four on five right now. Barnizer lost his shoe on the inbound. The feed to Martinelli oh, wow. for two. Four Down on the five. Man, they that's scored two. Like reverse power play there for Northwestern. Didn't even pull their goalie. And a foul on Langborg. Where someone stepped on the back and he's been shootless. And Jones misses the first. Four-point game, 19.8 to go. Free throw shooting has been a problem tonight for Purdue. One for two is Jones, five-point game. Inbound to Bowie. I'm Northwestern, I'm, I'm thinking three right here. Barnheiser working inside against Gillis, he'll take the two. It's a three-point game, inbound coming, and almost a steal. Oh my goodness, that almost got taken away by Bowie. Northwestern wants to review it yep. wisely. And this is a dangerous pass here. Bowie making a play on it. Looks like it's, it looks off like it's going to be off the hand of Boo Bowie. He's seen Lance Jones miss one. You gotta make sure you meet your pass here. Jordan Clayton on the floor for Northwestern. He has went five way house. early. Yeah, they went way early. And now into the inbound, oh and Jones oh is fouled. Wow. Almost lost his footing and went out of bounds. Instead, the foul on Nick Martinelli, and that'll be his fifth personal foul. So Martinelli fouls out. That could have been an offensive foul easily right there. Courtney Green, who called the blocking foul on Nick Martinelli, and that has fouled him out. Back we go to the other end, and Jones, who was one for two his last trip, will shoot two here. Wow. Purdue to the century mark. Two for two for Jones. Bowie, the three, rolls off, no good, rebound Gillis, Chris Collins is out, livid, he's been tossed out of the game by Courtney Green, and this game is over, and it ends with Chris Collins getting ejected from West Lafayette. That shot missed, and Chris Collins was out on the floor in the face of Courtney Green, still upset about the previous call on the baseline. And Chris Collins goes over to give Zach Eadie love as he leaves.